So, uh, hi guys, my name is Alexa Alexandra and I'm a web UI developer in SoftServe. And today I'd like to talk about memory leaks in JavaScript. Oh, yeah, it, it works. <laughs> so actually we did have a presentation with the same topic just about a half a year ago. Uh, it was presentation called Memory Leaks and JavaScript by uh, given by Vladislav Duhin in Russian. And here is the link to that uh, presentation. Uh, I watched that presentation just in recording, not, <laughs> not in person. Uh, and, now, and today I will try to focus on things that Vladislav didn't uh, dig deeply into in his presentation. First of of all, he uh, was focusing uh, mostly on Node.js peculiarities and I'm like a web UI developer. I'll try to focus on uh, JavaScript uh, development in web UI. So uh, let's start and uh, I suggest that we uh, Today, we identify what memory leaks are and what garbage collection are uh, uh, collection is and uh, look into memory leaks in React, for example, like in modern uh, library for web development. And I suggest viewing the tools, if there are any of them, except Google Dev Tools. Uh, so, um, I'm sure that you all know that no program can work without memory usage and every process of memory usage uh, looks like this. We should allocate memory for our variables, functions and so on. Then we are using this memory uh, and we should release memory as soon as we don't need it anymore. Uh, what can happen if we don't release memory? Uh, our application will allocate more and more memory until it reaches maximum of allowed memory size and it won't be able to use memory anymore and it will crash. Will it affect the operating system? Actually, it might. Uh, modern operating systems usually can deal with this problem uh, and it's not such a terrible problem for our operating systems now anymore. But still, sometimes even the most safe operating systems uh, can be affected and crashed uh, because of out of memory errors caused by some applications. Uh, for example, I've been using MacOS for more than half a year and I have experienced once that my operating system totally crashed and I, I may not crashed, but and uh, so much that I had only to uh, to make hard reboot for my operating system because it was just it it was just dead uh, because of uh, a lot of debugging in Chrome and it it just ate all the memory and. I couldn't do anything with my computer at all. However, usually operating systems should have uh, opportunities to deal with uh, such problems. So uh, let's proceed uh, to the definition of memory leaks itself. Uh, memory leaks are a class of bugs uh, where the application fails to release memory when it's no longer needed. Uh, on the right side of this slide, you can see a chart that uh, approximately shows how it, it can look like. Uh, your uh, memory usage is inevitably growing uh, in the course of time. It's releasing a little bit sometimes, but uh, obviously not enough, as you can see from this picture. Um, okay, so just for fun, let's have a, a small quiz right now, just for you to, to not be bored with this topic. So let's consider some situations and let's try to define if they are related to memory leaks, if we can define them as memory leaks or not. 
The first situation is the following. For example, we have a developer, Ivan, who solved some task and he implemented it with the help of algorithm of uh, complexity O of N in power three instead of the optimal O of N complexity for this particular task. Uh, what do you think if we can call this problem memory leaks or not? Not memory leak. <laughs> memory leak as well. Yes, sure. Of course, it's uh, it's not a memory leak because uh, it's not uh, optimal algorithm problem or not efficient uh, even not efficient algorithm problem. But this problem is like separate problem, not a problem of memory leaks. Uh, the next situation, uh, we are looking at the memory usage chart and we can see that memory usage is growing up all the time within a short period of time, for example, five, 10 minutes. Uh, can we state that we have memory leaks? What do you think? Any ideas? Mm, well, it looks like a memory leak, but um doesn't matter which period of time it happens. Well, well maybe it's actually, not enough in full. It, it's not enough. We should investigate. We should investigate because some period of growing of memory usage uh, is not saying that memory is leaking. It's not necessarily a memory leak uh, because, uh, as I will tell uh, later, a memory is released uh, kind of uh, in uh, in some moments that we cannot actually predict and we cannot state that if it wasn't released within five minutes for example then uh, then it must be a memory leak uh, the next situation uh, we are looking at the memory usage chart and we can see that memory usage is growing up during a long period of time for example a day or few days so is this memory leak? Yes. Yes, thank you for answering. Yes, actually I put here plus minus, but yes, 99% it's a memory leak issue. I uh, met in some uh, sources that, uh, for example, not, uh, optimal uh, implementation of caching uh, cannot be called memory leaks, cannot be classified as memory leaks, but can be classified as just like uh, bad implementation, for example, but it's questionable actually. So, uh, well, here 99% that yes, we are having, we are facing memory leaks in this situation. Uh, and uh, next, uh, the last uh, point of this quiz, uh, our application is crashed because of out of memory error. Can we state that memory is leaking in this situation? Yes. Uh, not necessarily, maybe yes, maybe no, because it all, uh, I, I put this across like we, we could not uh, say for sure that memory is leaking because it all depends on how much memory, how much maximum side of memory we are uh, allocating uh, to this application and how much it can use. Uh, for it works and how much it needs because any application can have some spikes uh, at, at some moments of time when it needs a lot of memory. And for example, it will release it a few seconds later entirely and no memory will leak. But at this particular moment of time, it needs a lot of memory and if uh, we cannot allocate uh, this amount of memory to, uh, if, if application cannot allocate enough uh, amount of memory for itself, it will crash with out of memory error. So it's, of course, it uh, might be a concern for investigation of memory leaks issues, but not 100% evidence that we are experiencing out of mem, uh, that we are experiencing memory leaks. Uh, for okay. example, uh -huh. it can be a uh, <clears throat> deep recursion in our code and uh, by this way we can stack in this uh, error out of memory. 
for example, but might not know. Maybe it's partially it is some memory leak. I don't know. Yes, sure. Actually, difference between um, memory leak issues and not efficient usage of memory, memory and not efficient algorithm is uh, pretty vague. And um, yeah, there are some some edge cases. <laughs> But it can usually, be just mistake of developers, maybe. Yeah, just mistake of developer, and uh, usually just out of memory error doesn't mean that this uh, memory will not be released in few, in nearest future. Probably it will. So probably uh, by definition it will not leak. But anyway, mostly it is uh, just mistake. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. it is a mistake. Okay, so uh, how actually the memory is released? Uh, let's, at first, let's see at the right side of this slide, let's see at uh, the uh, charts. Uh, so uh, at the top chart, uh, we can see healthy memory usage when memory is allocated and released, allocated and released. And after each release of memory, it kind of returned to the same level. It's of course, it's kind of, ideal situation, but just for uh, illustration. Uh, and in the bottom uh, picture chart, we can see that memory is allocated and it is released, but it's released to uh, the different level each time. And uh, in the course of time, it is growing. The usage of memory is growing. So you can see this curve is growing up. Uh, so what makes memory uh, being released? Actually, in some languages like C, uh, developers had to allocate and release me uh, memory manually. I uh, used to think that uh, like automatic garbage collection uh, appeared not very long ago because I know that automatic garbage collection is implemented in Java that was invented in 1991. It's implemented in JavaScript that was invented in 1995. So actually I used to think that automatic uh, memory releasing was implemented not really long before Java, for example, was invented, but I was surprised that uh, garbage collections uh, or automatic memory release was invented uh, pretty long ago in 1959 by John McCarthy for simplify manual memory management in Lisp. So a uh, program that uh, manages memory automatically uh, is called garbage collector and this process is called garbage collection. In, uh, I will repeat again that uh, in JavaScript, uh, we have automatic garbage collection, so we don't have to allocate and release memory manually. Everything is going automatically. Uh, how garbage collection is working in JavaScript? Uh, in JavaScript, garbage collecting is based on a reachability idea. Uh, so, uh, we uh, we uh, think that there is a base set of inherently reachable values that cannot be deleted for obvious reasons. For instance, local variables and parameters of the current function. I mean, on the uh, in the current scope, uh, variables and parameters for other functions in the current chain of nested calls, and global variables. These values are called roots, and any other value is considered reachable if it's reachable uh, from a root by a reference or by a chain of references. Uh, garbage collector in JavaScript is working by algorithm that is called mark and sweep plus a lot of optimizations are applied. So what uh, it actually does is that it's some periods of time, it's uh, marking all uh, reachable uh, uh, values and deleting, releasing memory uh, 
of uh, values that are not reachable. So like it, it is sweeping unreachable values. Uh, I mentioned uh, separately that optimizations I applied because uh, garbage collection algorithms uh, are optimizing uh, again and again in JavaScript all the time and things that uh, were real problem few years ago are not problem anymore. For example, a few years ago, uh, cycling references uh, were a problem, maybe not few, but 10 years ago, uh, cycling references were a problem, but uh, now cycling references are not a problem anymore. I mean, when you, uh, for example, are uh, writing that uh, a dot name, uh, is uh, um, equals to B and B equals to A, something like this. So like values that uh, point to each other. Uh, so now a uh, garbage collector can, uh, can uh, define them and sweep them. Uh, so garbage collection is background process in the JavaScript engine. It monitors all objects and removes those that have become unreachable and it's working in the same thread because JavaScript is single thread, uh, but uh, it's not blocking this single thread uh, since it's divided into small pieces. For example, it's mark it, it started marking uh, values, then it continues uh, your program, then it finished marking values, then it continues your program that is sweeping some values, continuous program, and so on. So it's working uh, by small uh, pieces, uh, by, by, by small pieces, so uh, it doesn't block uh, execution of uh, your code. Uh, and the garbage collector tries to run only while the CPU is idle to reduce the possible effect of the execution. Uh, that's why I've already said that we actually cannot predict when a uh, garbage collector will uh, sweep our, will release our memory. Uh, so if we see that during five minutes, for example, memory is uh, growing, probably our application just uh, uh, working very intensively and it and CPU is very busy and it just cannot uh, cannot give this our thread uh, for garbage collector to uh, release the memory uh, being uh, the next point being referenced is not the same as being reachable from a root uh, I mean if a pack of interlinked objects, uh, can become unreachable as a whole, they will be released altogether. Uh, and uh, one more uh, thing about garbage collection, garbage collection is performed automatically and now since 2019 we cannot force or prevent it. Uh, actually a few years ago you could easily uh, call garbage collection just from Chrome, I, I did it myself. I just for some investigation of memory leaks. I remember this five or six years ago. Now, as per web uh, development, you can trigger uh, JavaScript garbage collector manually only in uh, IE and Opera. Of course, it's not recommended. Usually it's done only for some investigation, some debugging uh, reasons. And uh, as per Node.js, you can call Node with some flags uh, and uh, you, you can uh, switch uh, gar automatic garbage collection off there in Node.js and uh, you can switch on manual garbage collection, but also it's not recommended. It's just for uh, research of your memory leaks issues in your application. Um, Okay, so uh, how it happens that garbage collection can't work as expected and we face memory leaks. Uh, so uh, in the previous presentation that Vladislav gave some time ago, he mentioned, mentioned pretty lot of uh, 
issues that uh, can uh, cause uh, memory leaks pretty a lot, uh, pretty lot of anti patterns, let's say. But actually, since garbage collection is uh, updating and is improving all the time, a lot of the, these issues uh, right now are just an example of uh, just an example of artificial uh, code, uh, ar artificial anti-pattern that nobody will actually use in real life. Uh, and some of them are not issues anymore, for example. So uh, let's uh, see the, uh, like the modern uh, picture of, um, of uh, memory leaks, uh, issues that, uh, of, of reasons of memory leaks. So uh, still wrong references, of course, are, uh, can be an issue. Uh, still, it's not recommended to use global variables because they will never release from memory or some redundant variables when you, for example, new variable uh, gets value of some previous value of uh, another object and keeps it and uh, doesn't allow uh, to release memory of that previous uh, object. So uh, still, uh, this recommendation is value to avoid uh, global and redundant uh, variables references. Uh, one more thing, closures that actually all the functions in JavaScript are closures, uh, usually <laughs> often. <laughs> uh, so uh, right now uh, they, they have been uh, pretty dangerous thing for uh, memory management for a while, but they are not as scary right now as they were before. And uh, garbage collector can deal with them uh, unless you made some other obvious mistakes. Uh, but as a pitfall, we have uh, unavailable variables while debugging. And I will show you an example a little bit uh, later. I'm sure that if you debug your code uh, in Chrome Dev Tools, sometimes you uh, face it, it, this issue and you were surprised that, for example, some variable, you, you want to see it's um, the value of some variable, but you see that it's undefined and you're like, why? <laughs> it, it, should have a, it should have a value. Uh, it's all uh, about uh, updating of uh, dealing with closures of uh, garbage collection in uh, uh, JavaScript. Uh, cyclic dependencies, not dependencies, references. Here is uh, an error. I will, I, I, will, uh, I will update it before loading to the site. Cyclic references and event listeners are not a problem anymore. Uh, so I was surprised that event listeners also uh, we, we don't have uh, to do remove event listener before removing the DOM node, for example, right now, uh, because also garbage collector can deal with this automatically and can uh, distinguish uh, things that, for example, event listeners were attached to some node that uh, is deleted. So it will be deleted, even though it has some event listeners at least, uh, at least uh, internet says so, <laughs> documentation. Uh, and asynchronous operations and subscriptions still should be uh, dealt with caution, for example, set timeout, set the interval, or fetch or some async requests, subscriptions, promises, and callbacks. We should be careful with them so that these asynchronous operations uh, uh, don't keep our uh, variables in memory and don't prevent them from being released. So uh, let's look into this uh, we, uh, in uh, more details and uh, let's start with closures. Of course, I will show you this uh, example in, uh, let me show you this example oh, in JavaScript, for example. In, uh, in browser, I mean. So, uh, not this one. 
Uh, oh. uh, sorry. No, just one minute. I will. Sh I will open it. So um, we have such a we have such a file that was very very scary in two thousand sixteen. I found it as an example of a dangerous closure that prevents a memory from being released. Oh, looks like it doesn't want to be, doesn't want to work. Okay, let me show you one more. I will probably close this. Oh, my Chrome is just... Mm, well, it's very bad. <laughs> my Chrome is, after all experiments with memory leaks, my Chrome is hanging. Oh, no, it's better. So, I hope it will work now. No, still doesn't want to work. Okay, let's at first let's look at the uh, implementation. Uh, so uh, this implementation uh, caused memory leaks in 2016. Now what we can see here is a function that uh, has some unused function that is referencing this original thing. I'm sorry, this original thing and original thing is referencing the thing another variable. And this variable uh, is uh, taking a value of very long string. And uh, when we call it in cycle, uh, it's not released. Uh, the previous uh, value of this uh, of this variable is not released uh, because we have uh, a reference to it from this unused function. Um, so, oh yeah, now it works. Hooray. So, <laughs> as you can see here, uh, we can call it once again. So, uh, I'm uh, showing uh, here not some message, I'm showing, uh, sorry. I'm showing uh, used uh, GS heap size and total GS heap size. And uh, as you can see, during the uh, cycle is going, nothing is changing and memory is releasing okay. So let's leave it alone. Let's consider this one. This one, this example is a bit different. different. Uh, here I wanted to show you that uh, this original thing uh, is just not uh, taking uh, the value. And uh, this thing is, uh, is, is cleared. So if we call uh, almost the same, uh, almost the same algorithm uh, with debugger, and we will uh, see, see the value of original thing. At first it's undefined, okay. Then uh, we will uh, have some more steps of our uh, cycle. Uh, you see that i is equal to three here, but original thing is still undefined. So uh, it's an example of how a garbage collector is working right now. It's, uh, it, it, it just can see this, that this function is unused and it doesn't create, uh, I mean, not garbage collector. <laughs> it uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't see it as a closure. It uh, doesn't keep memory for it. Uh, and memory is released. As you can see in this example, uh, 100,000 of steps of cycle uh, went and uh, uh, used uh, JavaScript heap size didn't change. So uh, this is an example of uh, 
how uh, JavaScript is now dealing with closures. Closures itself, closure itself is not uh, a scary thing anymore. Of course, if we add here one more line with, for example, console log original thing, it will fail. I, I checked, <laughs> of course, but it's not actually a problem of closures themselves. Themselves, It's a problem of wrong referencing, wrong variable usages, as I said before. So wrong referencing is still a problem. You should still be uh, careful with it. So it's uh, the next example. And uh, let's uh, proceed to more, uh, even more modern, uh, uh, modern uh, implementations of uh, application. Right now, um, it's a rare thing to use pure JavaScript for uh, implementation, uh, for JavaScript implementation. And uh, it's more uh, common to use some, um, some modern frameworks and libraries like Angular or React, for example. And uh, when working with uh, frameworks and libraries, uh, memory leaks is even less scary thing than uh, without them because these libraries provide some strict patterns for uh, application architecture, some uh, best practices, and uh, these facts also uh, prevent us from uh, uh, making errors with memory leaks. But still, uh, I'd like to focus on most common uh, memory leak error in React. It's uh, a situation when you are getting such warning, as you can see here, that uh, can't call set state or first update on uh, an unmounted component. It means that your component uh, was unmounted, but you had some subscriptions or some asynchronous actions bound to it and uh, it can't actually be released from memory uh, even after unmounting. Uh, so uh, for uh, memory safe uh, development in React there are some advices like uh, you should clear subscriptions and uh, different set timeout set intervals. Here, probably not like, but and different subscriptions and uh, set intervals, set timeouts in a component will unmount a lifecycle method. And uh, you should uh, clear asynchronous actions uh, when you call uh, requests uh, using fetch or libraries like Axios, uh, for example, abort controller for poor JS or for React, uh, or Axios cancel token source for uh, definitely for Axios. And also, it's not recommended to use deprecated methods right now and use only those that are not deprecated because there are a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, noticed in them, so try to avoid them. I uh, I attached uh, a link to a very interesting resource here is per uh, memory safe uh, uh, development in React. And let's consider one example as well. Also, I just provided it on this slide just for the history. But uh, of course, it's uh, I, I'm having it here in my idea, in my ID, IDE. So let's consider such a simple React example. We have index uh, file, main file, uh, main component, uh, where we are rendering this uh, internal component. Uh, sometimes we are rendering it, sometimes we are not. So each four seconds, we either render it, either clear it, either unmount it. So actually, it's getting unmounted, but uh, we are not providing component will unmount uh, uh, method implementation for it. And uh, the same time, we are uh, binding some um, set interval 
uh, asynchronous set uh, asynchronous method to it. So we are setting set interval and uh, and as a result, when it's unmounted, memory cannot be released. So let's try to let's try to run it and to see these bad subscriptions. Oh yeah, it's here. Excuse me for bad CSS, I didn't implement it. So you can see that uh, sometimes it's showing, sometimes it's, uh, uh, it's disappearing. Here you can see this warning, can't perform a React state update on an unmounted component. So we do have this warning and uh, we can see how memory is increasing here. And is not actually released. So we can wait for, I don't know, uh, 20, 30 seconds more, but you can see that it's only growing, growing, and it's not released. So let me stop it just to not have my browser crashed again. <laughs> uh, no, it's not this this one and let let me do this way reload it and uh, let's fix this issue uh, let's uh, implement component will unmount method in which we clear interval and let's call it good subscriptions and let's start it again So, um, we don't have that warning here anymore. And uh, you will see that the memory will be released. It, you can see right now, it, it was 68 and now it's 60 first figures. So 61. So uh, in this implementation, it will be all okay. It will be, memory will be released. It, it will grow, grow, grow for some period of time and then garbage collector will sweep uh, non, not used memory. We can proceed with presentation and uh, take a look at uh, console a bit later. So, uh, okay, so let's proceed with the tools. Uh, we have any tools except Google Chrome Dev Tools for monitoring our memory usage and uh, monitoring garbage collector. Actually, answer is no. Unfortunately, uh, even five, six, seven years ago, there were uh, different tools uh, except different from Google Chrome DevTools and I used them and I liked them even more. For me, they were more, um, more convenient. But right now I've been searching through the internet for a really long time, but I just uh, found out that all these uh, additional tools uh, were stopped to be supported from 2009, 2012. <laughs> and so a few years ago, there was nothing except Google Chrome DevTools. So they were just either uh, stopped to be maintained or they were uh, added to, they joined Google uh, Chrome DevTools. For example, it was Sleek Finder for JavaScript, just Sleek Check, and it's not longer supported. Right now, we still have just Memory Analyzer, but it's um, not a memory uh, management uh, monitor system. Uh, what it uh, it does, it just have your snapshot from 
Chrome DevTools and just uh, build some charts just for you to see it uh, more beautiful. Okay, so let's now uh, be back to our memory usage and you see that memory is released 69, 70 and 66 again here you can see. So let's stop this example and uh, let's proceed just with uh, the um, uh, with the view of uh, how just brief view of how Google DevTools work. So for example, I opened uh, an application that I'm currently working on. It's production, it's not secret <laughs> for anybody. Uh, and uh, you can open uh, developer tools, you can open memory tab and tab, and here you can make a heap snapshot, for example, so you can uh, uh, take a snapshot of uh, your memory and you can see um, what uh, structures, what variables use uh, memory most of all, for example. Uh, again, uh, this question was asked at the previous presentation. Uh, people asked uh, if we could uh, somehow uh, somehow uh, figure out right here that our memory is leaking. No, not a direct way to figure out that, uh, that uh, memory is leaking. So uh, Google DevTools will not uh, give you some alert with uh, some console warning saying that your memory is leaking here and here. You are using this variable wrong, for example. No, unfortunately not everything is much more complicated. All you can do, you can just, uh, at first you can monitor your memory usage uh, when you are just using application. For example, I will walk through this uh, virtual tour and I can just monitor how my memory is used here. Uh, Google shows you that it's growing or it's uh, decreasing, for example. So just right here, you, you can just make some impression from this panel. Also, you can take uh, some snapshots. For example, if you are digging deeply into this and your application, for example, are working for a few days, you can take snapshot if each day, for example, and then you can just uh, compare these snapshots. Or you can see, uh, the uh, memory allocation in this like leave mode but unfortunately it's not the application that is using a lot of memory so we, we can't actually see it it's it, it's very very little here <laughs> so let's probably i will try to open some no not this one this one also is uh, not a lot of um Let's open PDP page, for example. It's also production, also no secrets here. And for example, let's see uh, allocation of memory here when we will work with it. Oh, I don't know. For some reason, Google doesn't want to show allocation of memory here for me. Oh, it's strange. It's weird. Okay, usually it's showing, uh, it's showing kind of chart here, and then you can. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let me refresh the page. Uh, no, it doesn't want to. Well, okay. Let me open different. A different window. It's a presentation effect. Effect. Something is working wrong. Um, the, okay. So let's try to monitor memory. Oh, yeah. You see. It's something weird. Here it's showing you the allocation of memory as a chart. 
and by the way you can see the spikes that i mentioned before uh, you can see that uh, application is using very little amount of memory all the time comparing to these big spikes so uh, this spike can cause out of memory if we don't allocate if we uh, don't provide our application with enough uh, maximum size of memory so uh, on this snapshot you can just uh, take any small period of time and uh, you can investigate uh, memory usage here in this period of time or in this period of time again it's not obvious and it's not easy actually it's a thing of um, i don't know long investigation and long work usually a few days at least uh, and what else we can have here allocation sampling um, actually i don't know what is this record memory allocation using sampling method um, some uh, more snapshot also didn't work for me here okay so here we see that memory is memory usage is decreased so probably garbage collector released memory after the first uh, loading of the page that usually take a lot of memory well so it's all for today if you have any questions please free to ask okay thank you yeah thank you thank you guys <laughs>